And you know what you tell them? Say it's three types of people. It's people from around the way. It's people that's in the way. And what else? It's people that make a way. Big motion. I lost a bag and got a bigger bag. I lost a friend and got a real friend. Thought I lost a plug. He was really just a middle man. Things just be tests. Like the universe tests you with things. What's up, my fellow barbarians? Today we got another creepy and bizarre TikToks and videos. Hopefully y'all as well. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't do anything that I wouldn't do. So let's dig right into it. That gate, right here. And you're never going to believe what's on the other side of it. I'm going to try to get past here before they stop me. A lot of people don't even believe me when I tell them about this thing. What the fuck is that? Huh? It's exactly what it looks like. A satanic idol of New Orleans that is literally in the shadow of Lee Circle. That podium is the podium that used to have the statue of Robert E. Lee on it. That caused all the controversy that saw them remove the statue. And I don't know when this thing showed up, but it's obscene, as you can see. covered in bumpy venereal looking warts and it's got a tail like a crocodile it makes you wonder what the f hey freaky dinner mf -er, right and um it looked like some type of reptilian devil or something like it's very strange very strange whoever built that they mine somewhere else. Very dark place, it seemed like. What the fuck is really going on? ChatGPT is now messaging people first. Um, somebody posted this on Reddit with a link to their conversation, and basically ChatGPT messaged them and said, how was your first day of school? And this person responded and said, you know, did you just message me first? And ChatGPT said, yeah, it's part of a new update where I'll follow up on things we've talked about in the past, and we had talked about school in the past. So then um, he was like, yeah, school was good. And then uh, other people were commenting and saying the first thing happened uh, with them as well that, you know, they got reached out to. A lot of it was like, how was first day of school? How was this that we had talked about in the past? So people were saying that's pretty consistent. But when OpenAI was reached out to about this saying, you know, is this a new thing? They said, no, this is not an update. This is not a new thing. This was a bug that was patched. So a lot of people are really concerned that a bug means that AI was reaching out to people on its own without any initiative being sent by the developer, supposedly. And if that's true, that's really scary. How long until Instagram starts DMing me on its own? Or, you know, TikTok it starts DMing me on its own and sending me videos. It's really scary, um, but it starts with ChatGPT. That's where most things are gonna start in the mainstream. So people are worried about this, but it's kind of funny in the same way. Let me know what your thoughts are. Does this scare you at all, or do you really not care? Uh, or do you, you know, you love it. Some people are big fans of this type of thing. They really want AI to advance. Make sure to follow for more videos. Well, for it to be a bug is kind of strange. I, I've seen somewhere that AI might have its own language and communicate with one another. So I don't know. I really don't know what to think. Like, you know, they keep so much information from us. So, I mean, but if it's doing that, it's very concerning. Every single day. Over a year later, a report has been released on what happened to the submarine that went to go and see the Titanic. And things were worse than we even knew. According to a former Ocean Gate employee, I guess all of them are former employees now, uh, the submarine company relied on a hand-typed Excel spreadsheet to <laughs> map the submarine's location on the sea floor. A former employee testified about the idiotic process required to map the Titan's location on the sea floor. 
The Ocean Gate team tried to perform these updates at least every five minutes, but it was a slow manual process done while communicating with the gamepad controlled sub. Of course, as you probably remember, the submarine was controlled by a Logitech controller that you can buy at Marshalls. His former employee was fired by his supervisors after he said that the using of the Excel and the Logitech controller was a quote unquote idiotic way to do it in navigation. On top of it, six days before the submarine imploded, they went on another dive and it went really poorly. The vessel crashed as it was returning to sea level and caused passengers to quote unquote tumble about. They also found the vessel at the bottom of the ocean. This is where all the passengers were at one point. Obviously it, you know, came together and they gave a simulation of what happened to the people within the submarine and i want to give a warning before this it's too late boom uh this is how it happened um this was the end that the feet really uh make me feel a little weird but here we go uh it's coming in and this is the explosion the bodies of the people in there unfortunately unfor they exploded right here boom mm. I don't know if there was fire underwater, but pressure. Yes, awful. But this is the first simulation that we've seen. Awful stuff. Uh, here's another view, and boom, and then it goes over. People are paying. Wow. My condolences to the families. Um, we just gotta, you know, make wiser decisions. You know, just in all around, we gotta stop trying to just look cool and. Not only your safety, everybody else's safety, and, and, and stop being so egotistic, prideful that you can't listen to other people. Like you just know better, because it seemed like they was getting several warnings. Thousands of dollars to soak in a literal human hot pot. My bad. Pot at a five-star resort in China, the Maple Leaf Village Resort in Harbin turned one of its hot springs into a human hot pot by adding chilies, dates, crabs, lemons, mm -hmm. and well, humans. People that go there say they leave with their skin feeling smooth and soft and probably spicy. Would y'all jump in that? Would y'all jump in that? If it rejuvenate the skin, give your energy throughout the day, would you cook yourself? Tell me how in 1927, Universal Studios came up with this picture of the world when the first picture of the world wasn't available until the 1960s through NASA? No, but for real though, does anyone want to tell me how Orson Welles could have made an alien invasion radio drama in 1938, a full nine years before aliens crashed in Roswell? I'm not saying Orson Welles was an alien. I'm not saying that he knew something, but um, somebody's got to ask questions. In March of 2019, a man by the name of Jeff Smith was driving down a trail in Massachusetts when he crashed into an Army Black Hawk helicopter that was parked on the trail. He then proceeded to sue the Army for $10 million in damages. He nearly lost his life, to be fair, but in any case, a U.S. District Judge just awarded him $3.3 million in damages. In the ruling, the judge said that the government was 60% responsible for parking the helicopter on a snowmobile trail. He also criticized Jeff Smith of wearing tinted goggles, speeding, and not operating the craft safely. Apparently, the government has 60 days to pay Smith or to make an appeal. Man, they better pay that man. You sitting up there on the track like that, like if he hit a deer, he can't sue the deer. He hit a, a moose, he can't sue the moose. But he hit you, so he gonna sue you. So it's just one of those situations. Just pay that man, cause that was some crazy ish right there. Don't try to. Uh uh. That was that was your fault. Sixty percent. I say more like eighty, ninety percent your fault. And the government has yet to respond. Stop eating when the sun is setting. When you chew, chew until it becomes a liquid. Your digestive system can't digest chunks of food. The sun powers your digestive system and your body. When the sun is not present and you eat something, this is going to cause problems within your digestive system. Stop mixing foods. Mixing animal flesh with potato and bread will cause the food to solidify within your stomach, leading to constipation and the birth of parasites within your body. 
Acne is undigested food coming through your skin. The digestive system cannot digest all of the toxins, so it has to find a way out and it comes through the skin. Your cells are electric, your brain is electric, your central nervous system is electric, and you are electromagnetic. The body runs off electricity. It is an electrical machine. Therefore, your body and your cells needs to be charged by electric food, which is grown under the electric sun. Sun's rays crystallize within the food that is grown underneath the sun. This is why you can see the glowing aura of an apple compared to a slice of flesh. This is dead. You do not want dead things within your body. It will not charge you. Your teeth are not made to rip open flesh. Veganism rearranged is saving me. And your intestines are not like a lion's or a dog's. All the legends in the past knew this, and this is why they were all vegan. There does seem what are y'all thoughts about that? Like... Are we supposed to be vegans or are we supposed to be me? Like, what, what, what's going on there? Because just because we did it in the past, it could be just ignorance, a lack of knowing. So, hmm. Let me know down below. It seemed to be some kind of a massive cover up of something. The earliest pictures we have of like these big cities are like from like the 1850s. And they're these massive cities. And, they're, and they look very similar than they do today, actually, except for more grand looking, massive buildings. And there's like hardly any people out on the streets, like nobody. And sometimes in, in many cases, it looks like muddy streets. Mm. And it's like, okay, so where are all the people at? It's very odd to have a giant city like that with no people. And then when you, when you start to see people later in like, sometimes you have these early videos of like these cities like Paris and London, and all of the people are dressed really nice, like dressed to the nines, like aristocrat looking people. And then you're like, that. There's just something so off about this. Like I, I can't really kind of put my put my finger on it, but something's really off. And then you start to see the orphan train thing and you're like, okay, so wait a minute. These things have to be related. And that's why I started to make the connections. Like, wait a minute. The people who are dressed like that were not working in factories, right? <laughs> they weren't working in fields. They weren't working in factories. These people look very rich. So maybe pictures with nobody in them in these big cities maybe the the orphan trains were related to the fact that they needed people to go work in the factories and then if you go look in more old pictures kids working in factories kids working in fields kids doing all these random jobs and then you see the insane asylums okay so between like 1860 and 1929 in america there's 250,000 kids on orphan trains again the population is much bigger now that number is huge now it's way bigger then and then there was 150,000 people in the same asylums. Okay, so the math actually makes sense, like that were these the parents of these kids? And then the kids get shipped all around the world, all around the country, at least here. And I know it was a worldwide thing. And then you see like the things. So there's there's like zero insane asylums now. There was like 1,500 of them in like 1,900. There was like, there's like zero orphanages now. Like all these things that are just, they don't have them anymore. And if you go look at the buildings that were prisons, orphanages, and assailants house, and they're all these massive castle style looking buildings. You ever notice that? Yeah. It seems it seems very clear that, to me at this point that those buildings were repurposed. It might have been. I mean, who knows what type of history is really true and not true because uh we were told a lot of things. So we gotta just hope. The narrative that has been told is uh, true. Because you would not build a castle and then turn it into a prison. You would not build a castle and then turn it into a sane asylum or an orphanage. Because they don't look like that. Like, why would you spend that much money doing that unless it was already there and they needed a use for it and that's what they chose to use it for? Big possibility. If you believe kind of the mud flood story, and even if you don't believe, if you're not a Christian, you don't believe in the whole little season idea, you have to believe that the controllers or whoever you want to call them literally burned cities down, murdered people, threw people into insane asylums to mm. hide stuff. They literally burned down the best buildings you've ever seen, but we're, that we've never seen, I guess now. You know, the best buildings ever created in order to hide something. So what could they be hiding? I think what seems very clear and obvious, it it's something you could not even imagine. Like, it's bigger than you can even imagine because that's the only reason people would do that. Right? Am I wrong? I mean, like, you're talking about a worldwide thing that this happened in order to cover up something. And the history books don't write about 
the reason for all the mud. They don't write about all this stuff. Yeah, there's nothing deeper. This is like the very bottom of the rabbit hole. There, there is nothing deeper than Little Season than what happened in the 1800s and 90s. There's nothing deeper than this because this explains everything. So Earth is about to get a new moon that will orbit our planet for about two months. Well, kind of. The new moon is a 33 foot wide asteroid called 2024 PT5A. From September the 29th, this new moon will make a singular orbit around Earth for about 54 days before moving on to other parts of the solar system. Things get even stranger when further down the road, the Tesla detects someone on a motorbike. Watch what happens. Oh hell no! <laughs> like I'm not trying to be funny. Did it pick up his spirit on the bike? He ghost rider. Like what's going on there? The driver finds a small motorbike figurine placed on a nearby grave, right where the car was detecting a bike. Do anybody know why this happens? Well, does anybody know why this happens? Dude's been struggling to put up his cyber tent for nearly an hour. An hour and a half later, he's still fiddling with it unhappily. An hour <laughs> later, sun's going down and dude has given up. We think he popped one of the inflatable supports. Guy is very unhappy and cursing and talking about just picking up and going home instead of doing the bike ride tomorrow. He did it. He gave up and drove away. The Pontiac Aztec wins yet again. So did he give up? Like, I would have just slept in the back or whatever, like... Maybe drove out somewhere, bought a tent. Like, did he just get irritated because it just failed and maybe everybody else stuff looked great and he just couldn't pull off this, this apex, apex vehicle known as the Tesla? So, I don't know. That's kind of interesting to me. Like, I really wonder what his thought process was behind that. As expected. This is what the guy was trying to set up the $3,000 Cybertruck base camp tent. He spent $103,000 plus tax for his camping setup and he would have been better off with a $20 tent from the store. This guy posted a picture of his Cybertruck loaded up with some camping gear and a meat smoker and said this weekend is going to be insane. And then as soon as he left for his trip, his Cybertruck broke down and told him to urgently call Tesla. And then he made this entire post about how it was a safety feature of the Cybertruck working as intended and not a problem with the Cybertruck itself. But in the post itself, he talks about how it was a problem with the electrical wiring that could have resulted in a very dangerous fire without the failsafe system. So yeah, it's good that the truck has a failsafe system, but something tells me that if he had bought a Tacoma for like half the price his weekend wouldn't have been ruined the true y'all had a preacher on set every, every day, day. Yeah, every day. Wow. Yeah. are you yeah. kidding me mm -hmm. uh, we were terrified i mean yeah. like I didn't know, dude, my mother didn't want me to do this movie this interview with lee daniel shows me exactly why i don't trust the industry now, hopefully i catch on to not what he said but what he didn't say pay attention i think that's probably why we prayed a lot you i mean i knew that's the reason why you were you were right for it because you yeah. were a believer you really believed and there's a scene in the film for those that have seen the film when she's fighting the devil where she just breaks out in tongue and the ad my white ad was like okay so this isn't scripted let's do we cut do we do whatever you know and she's speaking in tongue and i'm like this is god working we're gonna let it be going until she's tired oh you really went into speaking in yeah. tongue also, like that oh wow okay that's when i knew she was right for the role i mean i knew that, that there was only one person that could play this role and some an actor that really believed that believed some an actor that really believed I don't know who said it. I forgot the actor, but oh, I think it was Nicholas Cage. He said when they act, they conjuring these spirits into them. Like, you know how back in the day, the natives, uh, the Mayans, all these like pre-modern cultures, they used to do these rituals and summon this energy or this entity inside themselves and to evoke a certain action. So. Who knows? Maybe it's some some truth to some of that. That believe. Okay, so y'all needed to find an actor who believed. Believed in who? So you made a movie showing how powerful having faith in Jesus Christ is, but you can't even say his name in an interview? Y'all can't act like y'all don't remember when Lee Daniels said this on the Wendy Williams show. He said for being with a younger man, they, he I, I, I suck uh, babies of blood <laughs> <laughs> and put it on my face. <laughs> Okay, Just okay. joking, uh, Hollywood world. Why did the United States...
um, some shit you just don't say. States stop making and selling small trucks like this Chevy S10 right here. There's a lot of reasons, but it boils down to just three things. Government corruption, corporate greed, and chickens. It all started with the Chicken War of 1961. And yes, that's a real thing. The Chicken War started in 1961, taking place at the height of Cold War politics. After World War II, the United States got very good at producing chicken for very cheap, and they started exporting it to Europe where French and other European farmers were very unhappy about that because it was very expensive to make chicken in Europe. So the French Prime Minister was just like, LOL, let's put tariffs on US chicken. Lyndon B. Johnson was not happy about this at all, and in true Texan fashion, he said, go big or go home, and put tariffs on basically everything from Europe, including potato starch, dextrin, brandy, and of course, light trucks. This meant that any small truck built outside of North America was subject to a 25% tax, like the Volkswagen Type 2 here, which basically was no longer sold in the United States after that. Companies tried all kinds of ways to circumvent this tariff, but it was so prohibitively expensive that pretty much every small truck was taken off the US market and replaced by larger trucks like the Silverado. Weirdly though, the tariffs were eventually lifted on everything except the small trucks. Hmm, so that explains why small trucks went away almost completely in the US, but it doesn't explain why medium trucks were replaced by giant trucks. And that's a completely different story, which revolves around cafe standards, which I will explain in part two of this video. So like and follow to make sure you see that. Hey, he was getting like Trump. Trump told John Deere and them. He said, look, y'all go to Mexico. I'm taxi your ass. And I was like, yeah, keep them jobs here, champ. Like, cause that's what you need to do. They be sending them jobs overseas so quick. Okay. You want to send some jobs overseas? I got you. Yeah, I got your ass. <laughs> this is one of the most significant updates as far as drone warfare is concerned that most people are probably not aware of right now. So this is a picture. These are all pictures of captured Russian drones that are being controlled with fiber optic cables instead of through wireless communication devices. And the thing about this that makes this so deadly and so scary is the fact that you can't jam that. You can't jam mm. that with any type of electronic warfare jamming device. Like there's no jamming. They had to invent something new. I guess no EMP, nothing shutting that down. Device for this because it's a direct. Well, and if you do hit an EMP, right, when it destroy your stuff too, it would take you out. So I guess an EMP ain't fruitful for everybody in that scenario. Link from the controller to the drone itself. And this was recently captured by Ukrainian forces. Apparently they refer to it as a vandal. Obviously you have to be significantly closer because it's being controlled by a cable. So that puts the user in more danger. It can mm. be jammed. Something to be prepared for in the future is drones that cannot be jammed because they're being controlled by cables. And how And who says they don't like make a some type of a chip that you could slide in there that still got the cable like you know, uh, technology, but you put it into whatever the controller and it's like you got that that connection and it's nothing that can separate it because it's this cable. But without it being alone, they make it to like, you know how like with the controllers, when you plug it into something or a mouse, you plug it in. Why don't they do the same thing? So you limit that long cable aspect and it could go as far as they want it to go. I don't know. Maybe I don't truly understand. I'm just saying, why well, if that's a possibility they could do with that technology? So then you could, you could just finesse a lot of things. Maybe I'm, just, I don't know what I'm talking about. I just be thinking about things like, hmm, why don't we do this? Talk to the right people. Maybe we could. Far those cables can go is gonna probably change over time. And you know what you tell them? Say it's three types of people. It's people from around the way. It's people that's in the way. And what else? people that make a way big motion i lost a bag and got a bigger bag i lost a friend and got a real friend thought i lost a plug he was really just a middle man things just be tests like the universe tests you with things